Yeah, hello again. Well, I'm out tromping in the woods, walking in the snow, playing in the snow a little bit, looking for a place to paint. I'm walking along the gold road near Crystal Mountain Ski Resort. I've been skiing up here at Crystal many times. Love it, it's one of the best resorts in the Pacific Northwest. Doing a little snowshoeing, although the snow's not really deep enough to need it along this road here. Here's a little glimpse of Crystal Mountain Ski Resort. That may be one of the Northway runs there. All right, well, I've been walking for a few miles up Gold Road. It's a beautiful day, mostly clear sky. After a week of rain or so, it's really nice to get out in the sun. We got a little bit of fresh snow here, but it's not too deep. I don't even need my snowshoes. Here's a scene I'm thinking of painting. It's a little different scene for me. There's not a real big mountain view or a view of any water, just kind of a snowy path leading off through the trees. I like the slope of the hill coming down to the road and then being interrupted by the road and then continuing on. So I want to capture that. I like the way the sun is hitting those trees, especially the contrast between the warm gray bark of the tree and the warm pine needles and then when it sinks into shadow it turns very very cool but also the deepest shadows are warm so there's lots of neat contrast going on I've got a wide spot in the road here to stand I think I'll have pretty consistent light because I'm facing mostly north so the sun's going to be traveling behind me to in the south. I also like these rocks up here and I'm just thinking how can I borrow those rocks? How can I include them in the composition down here? Because I don't want to paint this whole scene. So I'll think about that. I'll have a cup of coffee and get set up. Sounds like someone's playing with a Yep, someone's flying a little drone around. Noisy little thing. I'll start out with a very quick charcoal sketch. Just the basic idea. I want to place that big pine tree on one of the one-third lines. I'm using a birch panel that I gessoed myself. I'm going to change the scene. I'm going to delete the little copse of trees in the foreground and replace it with that group of rocks that I see further up the hill. I'm going to try to keep this really loose, really rough, and just see where it goes. I'm not going to worry about trying to finish it here or try to add any finishing touches. Since the days are so short, the light's going to change pretty quickly here. I'm going to watch the shadow pattern as it moves across the road and maybe when I get back to the studio I'll touch up the painting with the shadow pattern that I like the best. Otherwise I just want to have fun. I want to enjoy being out here in the clean cold air and just practice, practice painting on location. Part of the reason I go out on these hikes is to just kind of recharge my battery, fill up the creative cup a bit so that I'm excited about what I'm painting back in the studio. Nature getting out here in the wilderness really recharges my batteries. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I like using these hot hands. I stick them in the back of my gloves, keep my fingers a little warm. Um,
now I'll put my nitrile gloves on over these gloves. All right, I have a little bit of a charcoal sketch in there. I've got the big pine tree on this one third line. I've got the road kind of leading off into the trees and I brought those rocks down to here. I didn't place another big pine tree on this one third line. I wanted there to be some kind of imbalance to give a little bit of tension to the composition. So I put another big pine tree, which is just a little further back off of the one third line, kind of on the one third of this distance. So I'm trying to create a little bit of disharmony. I think that makes a painting sometimes more interesting. I also tried not to take my hill, the line of this hill, I tried not to take it right off the corner. That can be kind of, that can look kind of odd. Same thing with the road, I tried to not take it right out the corner. Um, and then I'm going to try to keep the road kind of a steep angle here, not too steep, and then flatten out to give that effect that the road is, is traveling through space. Well, we'll see what happens. I, I really like the contrasts of colors in the scene. I like the cool shadows from the blue sky, the reflected light from the blue sky. But when you look at the deeper shadows under the trees, especially where some ground is showing, it's very warm. The shadows are very warm, so that should be kind of fun. The snow itself has a lot of color in it. Um, the top plane of the snow has kind of a ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of a lizard and crimson effect, so kind of a nice lavender. And then where the sun is hitting it directly, it's a bright white with just a touch of greenish yellow, if you can believe that. It's probably not coming out in the video, but where the sun is hitting that snow straight on, It's so bright, it's almost a greenish yellow to my eyes. But it's not consistent. As it comes closer, it becomes more orange. As it recedes further, it seems to become a little more green. So that'll be interesting to try to paint. As usual, I'll start with a turpentine wash. In this scene, I think I'll go with just a wash of cobalt blue for the sky and then for the tree line I'll go with a wash of cadmium yellow where the ground is showing I'll go burnt sienna and then for the snow a lizard and crimson we'll see how that works out those are kind of the background colors that are glowing in the scene it's hard to explain. I know it's not coming through in the video, but when you're actually out here in person, there's kind of a an underlying pattern, at least to my eye. And it's it's definitely a, a sight that I've developed over the years of painting uh, to kind of see the color behind the, the first color. And it's just something that you have to practice and you have to play with. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm kind of thinking, what color could I leave exposed in the final painting that would make sense? So that's one way. If you had to just stay with the underpainting as almost a background color and then paint over with as little as possible paint on top of that, so the second layer on top of that with a more realistic color. What color would you choose? That's one way to think about it.
the wash is on, I'll use that same brush and just blend it softly. I don't want any thick paint. I want just a nice smooth surface. Blending it like that will help it to dry a little faster too. And it's drying a little slower than normal because of the low temperature, because it's cold out. I have the turpentine wash in now. I'm going to let that set up just a little bit and then I'll take a brush with a little bit of turpentine on it and wipe away the lightest lights. I haven't really seen a shadow pattern that I'm in love with yet. I'll keep my eye open but for now I'm just gonna kinda go with, with what I'm seeing in front of me. I'll use a little smaller brush now so that I can be a little more accurate with the drawing. I've wiped out the lightest lights now. I've got a band of sunlight here and another little band back here less intense. So I'll try to go with that. Hopefully that stays kind of consistent. We've got the one big tree, the next biggest tree, and then a third smaller tree. So those are kind of the three dominant upright figures in the landscape. And then a nice background of trees here, and then a nice bulwark of rock here in kind of this middle burnt sienna. Now I'll mix up a few of the main colors. I'll start with the background. I'll start with a little bit of blue for the sky. I can leave a lot of that wash just exposed. That's just about the right value for the sky. As I paint the sky, I'm using this soft synthetic brush. It's an old Da Vinci brush. I've used it for years. It's nice and broken in. I'm just trying to hint at the, the blue of the sky. It's not a very satura saturated blue, and it's a very light value. As the sky gets higher, it gets a little darker blue, and I'm adding a little bit of a lizard and crimson as well, because I, I see that in the sky here. And then also as it gets closer to the horizon line, it's getting lighter in value. And I'm adding just a little bit of yellow and even a little touch of cad red just to warm it up as it gets closer to the horizon. I'm also painting over where I'm going to paint the background trees eventually. That's because I want the edge to be soft. As I paint those trees over the sky, it'll create a nice soft edge. I have a few colors mixed up here. I've got some greens for those distant trees, some greens for the closer trees, and some browns for the soil, the rocks under the trees. I'll take a bristle brush now, a little larger than I think I need, um, and paint those trees as quickly as I can, moving from the background to the foreground.
you might notice I'm holding the brush as far back as I can. I've just barely got a hold on the tail end of the brush. I'm doing that on purpose. It's something that I've trained myself to do when I'm trying to paint quickly. It lends to more calligraphic brush strokes, to prettier brush strokes in my opinion. It also lets you be very delicate putting down the paint. So if you're painting wet into wet, if you hold the brush way back, you can really touch lightly. Whereas if you choke up on the brush, if you hold it like a pencil, then you're gouging that wet paint and you'll pick up paint. So often I can use a bristle brush even when I'm painting wet onto wet, whereas people would have a hard time um, even with a softer synthetic brush if they were really choked up and using the brush like a pencil. Then the trees coming forward, I'll try to go lighter, less saturated for the background trees, more intense, darker shadows, more saturated colors as the trees come forward. That'll give it that effect of depth. I'll take a palette knife and with these light tan, light warm grays, I'll draw the, dr the trunks of the near trees first and then the branches and needles. outside winter scenes in the city. And they oh, talked yeah. about how it, it was tough work to sit out there in the winter time and paint that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really, really yeah. hard. If it, it can be. If the, on a day like this, it's not too bad. But yeah, yeah. if it's down below freezing, you can't stand on the snow, you'll freeze. Yeah, yeah. you just, you gotta <laughs> keep it. sucking it right out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, looking good. I got a business card if you want to take a look at it. When it's done, I'll put it out on my website. Absolutely. Oh, that'd, be great. That'd, be, that'd be fun. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you Talking guys. With you. Have a good day.
The light's changing quickly now. The sun's gone behind a cloud or behind the mountain behind me. So I need to go ahead and just grab some color notes. So I just want to grab a color note for the light hitting the rocks up there. I'll try to grab that orange and greenish, olive green. It's all pretty warm. I'll try to grab that before the light fully fades. And I also want to capture the kind of deep purple of the shadow on the snow. finished. Got as far as I could I think here outside. The light is changing so much now. Everything is soft. There's very little shadow value. And those brilliant blues in the shadow, the brilliant yellow green and the light on the snow. It's pretty much gone now. Still a pretty scene but just a much different scene. So here's the painting. It's very loose which is what I wanted. It's just a little 8x10, so I didn't want it to be overly detailed. I do like the shadow pattern that I captured. I like also how the these highlights on the snow are leading you into the scene. I'll take it back to the studio and play with it a little bit. Put the finished painting out on the internet. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I also want to thank my Patreons. I have a couple new people that signed up. I really appreciate that. Selling paintings and my Patreon supporters are really what allow me to do what I love to do. So I really appreciate it. I'd also ask that if you like these videos, please visit my website and sign up for my newsletter. You'll immediately get a discount on any original art or prints, and it's the best way for me to keep you updated on what I'm doing and on my artwork. Thanks as always for joining, and have a great day. I hope I see you out on the trail.